Welcome to the fraction video. Today we're going to learn about fractions. Fractions are equal parts of a whole. Well, what does that mean? First off, we need to remember uh, what whole numbers are. Whole numbers are numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and all the numbers that we usually count with. But fractions live in between all of those whole numbers, okay? Because sometimes whole numbers can't do the job. We've got to talk about pieces of things and parts of things. And that's when we start using fractions. So, how do we write a fraction? Well, here's an example of a fraction right here. Um, there's usually, well, not usually, there's always a number on the top, a line, and a number on the bottom. The number on the top has a special name called a numerator. The number on the bottom has a special name called a denominator. And each one of those has a very important job on how to communicate value in a fraction. So let's see what the numerator's job and the denominator's jobs are. So let's go over here to this sushi roll here. It's packed with raw seafood and wrapped up in a nice piece of seaweed. And let's say I cut it into four pieces, like this. And I'm going to start writing my fraction. Well, on the bottom, I'm going to write the denominator first, and I'm going to write a 4, because the denominator represents the total equal parts. I cut the sushi into four equal parts, so I have to make a denominator of 4. Now, let's finish the fraction. Here in the middle, we have two friendly sumo wrestlers who are eating some, or eating the sushi roll, okay? The one on the left is eating three-fourths of the sushi roll because he's eating three of those little pieces. And the one on the right is eating one-fourth of the sushi roll, because he's only eating one of the pieces. So the numerator, the number on top, tells us the equal parts present. For the sumo wrestler on the left, he has three pieces present. For the one on the right, he has one piece present. So, remember, the denominator, we had to put a four, because we cut the whole sushi roll into four pieces. Then the sumo wrestler on the right equals three-fourths of the sushi roll, because the numerator tells us how much he's eating. And the sumo wrestler on the right is only eating one-fourth of the sushi roll. I guess he's on a diet. All right, now let's notice something else very important here about fractions. Here I have a couple different sushi rolls, and I cut them up uh, differently each one. So the first one I cut into two pieces, so I had to put a denominator of two, and each one of those pieces is one half of the sushi roll. So I put a one for the numerator. For the one in the middle, I cut it into three pieces. So I had to put a three for the denominator. And the one on the right, I had to cut it into four pieces. So I had to put a four for the denominator. Now notice something very important here. Think. Normally we think four is more than two. But with a fraction, we have to think a little bit backwards, because look closely at the pieces. Which one of those has smaller pieces? Well, the one with the four in the denominator, one-fourth, because we had to cut it up four times, it has smaller pieces. And this is something very important to remember. A bigger denominator means smaller pieces. For example, here, the fraction one-half represents much, much more than five one hundredths. And even if you think, well, five and a hundred are more than one and two, you got to think what a fraction means. If you took a sushi roll and cut it into a hundred almost microscopic pieces, even if you had five of them, it's still very little sushi. If you had the other sushi roll and you only cut it into two pieces, one of them is going to be much, much, much more. Okay, so remember, a bigger denominator means smaller pieces. Don't let those numbers fool you. Okay? Another interesting thing about fractions is what happens when we start putting them together. Let's go back to this sushi roll. If I had one half of my sushi roll, and I took the other half of the sushi roll, and put them together, how many halves do I have? Well, two of them. Two halves. Two over two. And guess what that number actually equals? One. Which makes sense. If you took a sushi roll and cut it into two parts, and then ate both of the parts, all you did was eat the whole sushi roll, okay? So, pretty easy. But what gets very interesting is that the one in the middle, if I take one-third plus one-third plus one-third, that equals three-thirds. And guess what that is also equal to? One. 
And if I take one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth, that's equal to four fourths, which is also equal to one. All right. So any fraction with the same numerator and denominator is equal to one. So all those fractions that I have there are all equal to one, which makes sense because if your denominator says you cut a sushi roll, for example, into 1,425 really, really tiny pieces, but you have every single one of those 1,425 pieces, well, guess what? That's going to equal one. Another interesting thing about fractions, we can learn from our very full and somewhat fat sumo wrestler friend here. And what happened is I had one whole sushi roll, I cut it in half, and I gave the, 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 the sumo wrestler one half of it, and I kept the other half. But with the half I kept, I started cutting that one half into half again. So now I have two-fourths of the sushi roll. And I took each of those fourths and cut them in half again, and I now have four-eighths of the sushi roll. And then I cut all those in half again, and I now have eight-sixteenths of a sushi roll. So even though I have four different fractions, one-half, two-fourths, four-eighths, eight-sixteenths, they're all equal to the same amount. All those fractions are equal. Because even though the numbers look different, they represent the same amount of value. Okay? Because remember, when I started chopping up the sushi more, I didn't give more sushi to the sumo wrestler. It's the exact same amount of sushi. I just cut it into smaller pieces. Okay? So just because two fractions have very different numbers, they sometimes can be equal. Alright? Now, let's see how much we really understand here. Remembering that a bigger denominator means smaller pieces, um, we're going to see if we can figure out by looking at the pictures in the fractions which is greater than, less than, or equal to. So our sumo wrestler on the left has two-thirds of a sushi roll, and the sumo wrestler on the right has one-fourth. Now, is two-thirds greater than, less than, or equal to one-fourth? If you said greater than, you are correct. Just look at the picture. Even though you might think, well, four is bigger than three, you got to remember, a bigger denominator means smaller pieces because we cut it into smaller pieces. So two-thirds is more sushi than one-fourth. Let's look in the middle. Four-elevenths, is that greater than, less than, or equal to three-fifths? It is less than, okay? Because remember, 11, you cut out that sushi 11 times. Those pieces are a lot smaller, and even though you have four of them, they're not very big pieces. So three-fifths is more than four-elevenths. Now let's go to the last one. Is one-half greater than, equal than, well, sorry, greater than, less than, or equal to ten twentieths? If you said equal, you are correct. Because look at the pictures, it's the same amount of stuff. And think, what is half of 20? Well, 10. Okay, so 1 half and 10 twentieths are the same amount of stuff. It's just cut up a little bit differently. So, remember, fractions are equal parts of a whole, and fractions live between whole numbers. Uh, the denominator represents the total equal parts. The numerator represents the equal parts present. Any fraction with the same numerator and denominator is equal to 1, and a bigger denominator means smaller pieces. Also remember that sometimes fractions might look very different, but actually represent the same amount of value.